It's not really a surprise to me to see Nintendo being vindictive. That's pretty much their entire history. But in today's story, we're going to talk about how Nintendo really decided to literally sue a man into the ground and ruin his entire life because that man, Gary Bowser, worked for a company that made mod chips for the Nintendo Switch. And yeah, the guy's name is really Gary Bowser. But this time, instead of rescuing Princess Peach using sheer brawn and force of will, it looks like Nintendo decided to go the route of Paper Mario, specifically legal Paper Mario. So who the heck is this Gary Bowser guy anyway? Well, he's got a complicated past. I'm not going to say that he's a good guy or even defend his character. The dude's been accused of being involved in a lot of high profile video game related hacks, which have led to a lot of accusations of fraud, money laundering, and tax evasion being levied against him. Not exactly the portfolio of a winning character, but hey, the guy shares a name with a fictional villain, so of course he wasn't ever going to be the church going model citizen we all hoped to be. What particularly got him in trouble this time was his ties to Team Executor, a hacking slash modding group that partook in the sales of mod chips for video game consoles, in this case the Nintendo Switch. One weird thing, however, is that in the course of my research, it started to bother me that this guy didn't seem to be all that involved in the actual production of these mods. It seems like he was mostly in charge of public relations and marketing for Team Executor, basically controlling their social media accounts, their website, doing customer support, and other stuff like that. So it's not really like Nintendo took down the head honcho with this, but he was seriously involved in their operations, it appears. Hey guys, just jumping in real quick to remind you to like and subscribe. Back to the video. Bowser was in the Dominican Republic when the feds tracked him down. Not sure why someone involved with what appears to be a fairly lucrative illegal hacking slash modding business would decide to hang out in a country that has favorable extradition treaties with the United States, especially in one of the small island nations that are in our backyard and maintain their sovereignty at our whim. But whatever. He was arrested and shockingly extradited to the good old US of A for some good old fashioned justice. He faced 11 felony charges including conspiracy to commit money laundering, wire fraud, conspiracy to circumvent technological measures, and trafficking in circumvention devices. Basically, he was fucked. He ended up pleading guilty to two of the charges and was sentenced to 40 months, three and a third years, in prison as well as $4.5 million in restitution to Nintendo of America. The judge clearly wanted to use Bowser as a deterrent to future people who might want to get into selling console mods, and though his initial sentencing was bad enough, poor old Bowser was going to get beaten by Mario again. You see, you may have seen the headline saying he owes $14 million to Nintendo, right? But he was only sentenced to have to pay $4.5 million to Nintendo. So where did that extra $10 million come in? Well, Nintendo didn't just want to drop the criminal justice hammer on Bowser, but they wanted to absolutely decimate him in civil court too, where Bowser agreed to pay another $10 million to Nintendo in order to settle that case, bringing the total the guy owes to $14.5 million, which is obviously a lot more than an average dude like Bowser can pay, especially since given his new criminal record, he's not exactly got the best job prospects. Interestingly, while he was in prison, making little more than pennies, he paid off $175 of his $14.5 million debt. If my math is right, at 28 cents an hour prison wage, that's equivalent to 625 hours of the man's work while in prison, or just over 26 days worth of work time. It seems like he's basically an indentured servant at this point. Now, Bowser was recently given early release from prison for his good behavior and is being sent back to his home country of Canada where he will still be forced to repay his debt. You see, this is where the story gets people mad. As part of the agreement Bowser signed with Nintendo, for the foreseeable future until his debt is paid off, he will have to pay them 25 to 30% of his monthly income. That's right over a quarter of his monthly income until he pays back the 10 million, then he'll still owe the 4.5 million and who knows how they'll try to get that back. Generally, and I don't know about Mr. Bowser's case specifically, this kind of debt is not exactly the kind of debt that can be dismissed with a casual bankruptcy. He's going to have to pay off that debt or more likely, die trying and then have Nintendo take whatever they want of his possessions when he dies to satisfy his debt. Now this kind of thing isn't really as out of the ordinary as you would think, which is sad because I agree with the general sentiment that this is cruel and unusual punishment. It's his fault, yeah. If he hadn't worked for a mod company that he most likely knew was operating in a legal gray area, if not completely illegal, then he wouldn't be in this mess. 
but it's kind of fucked up on Nintendo's part that the criminal award they got from him was already over $4 million, and yet they still decided to rinse the dude for the extra $10 million. Now, I know that in the eyes of the law, he deserved this fate, but it just seems very vindictive to me. They clearly know that the average person has zero chance to pay that much back, so why push for so much in a civil trial? It's going a little bit over justice, and seems like they just want to completely ruin the man's life. We made indentured servitude illegal over a hundred years ago, and yet it seems like there's still a way to get stuck as one. Now, I'm not super familiar with Canadian cost of living, but from my quick look, it seems like Canada, in the cities, has a fairly high cost of living. I don't know how anyone can expect a man to live paying off that much of his income for the rest of his life. It seems draconian. The court imposed financial sanctions onto Gary Bowser, but because of the severity and the payback agreement, it seems more like a court-imposed sentence of homelessness. Now, it's not super surprising that Nintendo is going so hard against Bowser. They have a history of being a kind of ruthless business. It's honestly probably a cultural thing, whereas an American company would be worried about hurting their brand image, a Japanese company doesn't really care about that BS. In Japan, businesses are honestly encouraged to be ruthless. They have a culture that rewards basically religious effort towards work. They work so much longer days and deal with so much stress because of it that it's not uncommon for Japanese businessmen to die as a result. If those deaths haven't changed the mind of the Japanese people, then I doubt making poor Gary Bowser homeless is going to change anything. I mean, we are talking about a company so protective of its copyrights that until recently, you couldn't play a Nintendo game on YouTube or Twitch without joining their special creator program, or you risked a strike, regardless of whether or not it would have been actually legal for them to do so. Because, well, they're Nintendo. They know the list of people with the resources to get into a long, drawn-out legal battle with them is pretty short. Maybe, like, a few hundred individuals. And those kinds of people aren't posting Nintendo Let's Plays on YouTube. Recently, though, they've been kind of even going back on that as well. We'll be talking about it later this week, but they've recently launched a bit of a campaign to take down modded Let's Plays on YouTube. So I think that it's possible that they just really, really hate modding. Which, I mean, they're allowed to hate it, but that doesn't make them in the right. I wonder if they just never got over the game shark proving to everyone that there wasn't a Mew underneath that truck. And now they're taking it out on a man named after one of their favorite villains. At the end of the day, Mr. Bowser did plead guilty to some charges. He did enter into the settlement agreement on his own. But do we really want to allow such vindictive punishment for what amounts to a pretty basic thing? Especially since he wasn't even the brains behind the operations. He was just a website admin and marketing guy. Not exactly the most important position in the company. Sorry, marketing bros. To be fair, this does make for a pretty big deterrent. I'd think twice if I was a random techno criminal these days, between Gary Bowser and the eventual massive sentence that Sam Bankman Freed will get, I'd think that techno fugitives will not want to stay in tropical islands these days. The feds are watching those islands like hawks. What do you guys think about this whole situation? Do you think that Gary Bowser got what was coming to him? Do you think that it was excessive? Let me know in the comments. Personally, I think it's a little out of character for a children's video game company to be so hellbent on destroying a dude's life, but that's just my two cents. Thanks for watching till the end. Have a great day and God bless you.